Okay. Welcome everyone to this class on uh, keys to supernatural ministry. Um, well, we had a few extra minutes on the other class, so um, people might take a minute or two to join, but um, let's pray. I have started the recording, so this class is being recorded. So let's pray. Somebody could pray with us, and then we will get started. Go ahead. Um, Anita, you want to pray? Let's. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you glory, give you praises, O Lord Father, for yet another time to listen from your word, O Lord Father. Father God, let us be empowered, O Lord Father, according to your word, O Lord Father, that through our works, O Lord, let your light would shine, O Lord Father, your name would be glorified in and through our lives, O Lord Father. Mm -hmm. Father Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord Father, for the pastor, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, as he imparts knowledge. And O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, as he gives us, O Lord Father, way to apply it in our lives, O Lord Father. Let our hearts and mind be open to receive it, O Lord Father. And O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, let it up. Of a bear a fruit, O Lord Father, in our lives, O Lord Father, Lord. We give you glory, give you praises for the precious time. We love, submit everything unto your hands, O Lord Father. Lead us in mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for connecting to the class. We are talking about keys to uh, supernatural ministry. Uh, we're just going on. Um, uh, in sequence, uh, one after the other. Harrison, you have a question? Sorry. No, that's okay. Okay, that's all right. Um, so, just to quickly recap, um, in section two that we are right now in, uh, we've been talking about various keys, uh, and um, there, were, there are eight keys that I want to um, share with us. Uh, the first one that we discussed was about understanding the realm of the spirit, key one. The second key we talked about was faith. Um, and the third one was the key. The third key that we talked about was the power of the word of God. The fourth key, which we spent time on last week, was that of the renewed mind. That means if we want to engage in the supernatural, uh, we have to step out of the natural mind and step into this place where we move in the ways and thoughts of God. So that's how we can, you know, we can step into the supernatural. So we um, talked about that last week. Today, we're going to go into key number five, uh, which is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I will share the notes with you uh, a little later on the coursework section. But I want to just uh, talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, okay, people are still coming in. All right. Now, when you talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit, uh, and I'm just going to touch on, you know, uh, important things that we need to know about. Um, uh, it is not a complete, you know, uh, teaching on the anointing, but we all know that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He dwells in us. Now, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is also referred to as the anointing, right? That John writes about. John says in 1 John chapter 2, and in both in verse 20 and in verse 27, he says, you have an anointing from the Holy One, and this anointing abides in you, and the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie. So this is in, uh, I'm quoting First John chapter two, verse twenty and verse twenty-seven. Right. So uh, John writes about it. So the indwelling, even the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is in these verses in 1 John 2, 20 and verse 27, 
referred to as the anointing. So the anointing is a title given to the Holy Spirit in that sense. But the anointing, uh, as we are talking about it, using it now in, com in this conversation, when you talk about it, we're talking about the, not the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, but we're talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit coming upon a person to empower us to do the work God has called us to do. So that's how we are referring to as the anointing, right? And uh, you say, how do you, you know, on, on what basis do we differentiate the indwelling uh, presence of the Holy Spirit versus the uh, coming upon the, the presence of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, as we are saying. So this can be easy, easily seen uh, in scriptures like Luke 4, 18 to 19. In Luke 4, 18 to 19, uh, these are familiar verses. This is how Jesus quote, uh, he quoted from Isaiah 61 at the start of his ministry. And notice very carefully what he said. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. So we're talking about this. The Holy Spirit resting upon a person that we say the person is anointed is upon you. But then he's upon you to do something. And Jesus goes on to say to preach, to heal, to proclaim liberty, to give sight, to set at liberty, to proclaim. That means he's upon in order to do something. So the indwelling is to transform me. The anointing upon is to empower me to do something. So when we talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we are to, referring to the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit upon the person, upon us, empowering us to do what God has called us to do. Right? So uh, do we understand the difference? Okay. I don't want us to get too, too technical. I mean, is the Holy Spirit upon me, flowing through me, or is the Holy Spirit from within me, flowing through me? Because in John 7, there is also the language that's used of the Holy Spirit flowing out of us like rivers of living water. Right? This is John 7, um, 37 to 39. So that is also language used to refer to the presence and power of the Holy Spirit released through a person. So uh, I, I don't want to get too hard and fast about this, but uh, just for consistency, when we say anointing, we're talking about the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit released through the person to impact lives. Whereas when we talk about the indwelling, we're talking about the Holy Spirit within the person to change the person, you and me. Okay? So, key number five, we're talking about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So this is the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit being released through you and me in order to cause healings and miracles. That's what we're talking about. And we need to understand that and you know, get into that. Yes, Maggie, you have a question, please? Yes, sir. Um, question on, on, on uh, the in indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the scripture says that whoever is born again has the spirit dwelling in him, in him. Mm. And my question is, why do church, you keep on uh, asking for more of Holy Spirit, and then after we are filled with the Holy Spirit, there's nothing that is is done with it. And then next week again, to be the same story, and then so it's, it's more... It's like weekly asking for the Holy Spirit and nothing is, comes out of it. While in the, the book of Acts, uh, when the Spirit came, after that people did uh, miracles, they went and preached the gospel, they went and, and uh, healed the sick. 
So is it wrong to ask for the Holy Spirit every Sunday to come or because we have the Spirit in dwelling, dwelling in us? Thank you, sir. Mm. Okay, I'm trying to trying to understand your question, like what 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 you get trying to get at. But let me just say it, and if I miss anything, uh, please feel free to follow up with a, with another question. But the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us, right? We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He's dwelling in us. He's dwelling in each of us, and he's there. He's he's come to abide. He will abide with you forever. He's come to abide with us. So he's there all the time. But uh, in talking about the life of the believer and how you live out the Christian life, the Bible tells us to be filled with the Spirit. You know, read about this in Ephesians 5, verse 18, to be filled with the Spirit. Or in Galatians 5, it talks about, you know, you live in the Spirit, you be led by the Spirit, and you walk in the Spirit, all in Galatians 5. So for the Christian to live out his or her life, the Bible is saying, be filled with the Spirit. So there is nothing wrong in asking every day, Lord, fill me. Every day, Lord, fill me fresh. Fill me afresh with your spirit. What am I saying? I'm saying, God, I'm saying, I know the Holy Spirit has not left me. He's in me. But what I'm saying is, Lord, I want the Holy Spirit to so take charge of me where I am completely submitted to the Holy Spirit. Right? So when we say be filled with the Spirit, what we are saying is Holy Spirit have full influence on me. And how can I say I'm filled with the Holy Spirit? Ephesians 5, 18 to 21. You know, yeah, it says, you know, giving them, um, speaking to yourselves and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So those are the expressions of the spiritual life. Or in Galatians, it talks about, you know, you're walking in love, joy, peace, kindness, kindness, meekness, goodness, temperance, faith. That's the expression of walking in the spirit, living in the spirit, and being led by the spirit. Right? So the Bible is telling us to be continually filled with the Spirit. And so in order to do that, I pray intentionally, Lord, fill me afresh with the Spirit. I'm just saying, Holy Spirit, have all of me. Take, uh, you know, fill my, me so that I can walk, I can walk in submission to you. And my life will be one that manifests the virtues of Jesus Christ. So to answer your question, from that perspective, it's something we have to pray or we should pray often. You know, be filled with the Spirit. Lord, fill me afresh. Anytime I feel like I've given my flesh more dominance, I pray, God, fill me afresh. Why? Because I want me to be in submission to the Holy Spirit. That's the purpose of that prayer. I'm just bringing myself in submission. The other aspect is about the anointing, right? Which is what we want to talk about today, uh, is the empowering of the Holy Spirit on our lives for ministry. Right? The indwelling, infilling of the Holy Spirit is for us to live like Christ, walk Christ-like, which is like what I just described. We need to be very sensitive and pray that, walk in that. But the anointing also, we say, God, anoint me afresh. Or God, anoint me even more. And, and I will... You know, a little later on in this lesson, we will answer Beth's question about different measures of the Holy Spirit because the Bible talks about that, right? The different measures of the Holy Spirit. There are different measures of anointing. So we pray, say, Lord, anoint me afresh. Anoint me more. Why? Again, it's not because the Holy Spirit has left me, right? We will see that we are 
always anointed in the sense that there is the presence of the Holy Spirit upon our lives always. He doesn't come and go like a dove floating in and out. Now he's resting on us all the time. But we need the, you know, it's almost like if you want to use an analogy, we need to turn on the switch. He's always there, but you need to turn it on. Turn on the, you need to activate. We need to go from a passive resting on us to an active resting on us. That's what we're talking about. And I'll explain that. I was you know, kind of building up towards it. I'll explain it. That means the Holy Spirit always on us, right? Second Corinthians. Uh, I'll give you scriptures for this, what I'm saying. Uh, Second Corinthians 1, and I think it's verse 21. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Second Corinthians 1, 21. Uh, the ends 1, 21. Okay. So the whole, we are always anointed. That means you, we always have the Holy Spirit upon us. He's, he's resting in us. He's dwelling in us. He's upon us all the time. But just like in the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, I need to be continually filled. That means I need to be continually yielded to his presence so that I can then walk and manifest the fruit of the Spirit. In the same way, when it comes to the anointing, you know, I'm just using the word passive and active just as a language to communicate. But don't think the Holy Spirit's gone to sleep and <laughs> I need to wake him up. That's not it. I'm just using language to try to communicate the truth, the, the actual working. All right. So it's like the Holy Spirit's always upon us. We're always anointed. I can at any time open the Bible and start ministering. At any time I can, you know, start moving in the things of God because we are always anointed. But there is that sense when the anointing begins to, you know, to, to become tangible, to become something where the Holy Spirit says, I want you to do it. I'm empowering you to go do this work. Go. Right? That's when we say, okay, the anointing is active. And, the, the, and, and then in that context, we also want to explore and talk about different measures of anointing and how to yield to the anointing and how to be sensitive to the anointing because the anointing can flow for different purposes. So sometimes we say there's a healing anointing. Sometimes we say there's a prophetic anointing. Sometimes we say there's a revelatory anointing. Sometimes we say there's a, you know, a, a, an anointing for deliverance. I mean, what, what is all that? You know, so we want to explain that it means it simply is the same Holy Spirit wanting to work towards a different direction. So when there is a teaching anointing, it means the Holy Spirit wants me to teach the word. When I say there's a healing anointing, it means the Holy Spirit wants to work healing. When we say there's a prophetic anointing, it means the Holy Spirit wants to move prophetically. When we say there's a delivering anointing, it means the Holy Spirit wants to bring about deliverance. So that's it. It's the same Holy Spirit, but depending on what he's moving us to do, we say that's the nature of the anointing. Now, in that context, also we say, Lord, we anoint us afresh, or we want more. Now, why do we pray for more? Is it right to pray for more? In, in this Yes. Why? Because God is infinite. You can be filled, but there is still more of him. Because he's infinite. Right? So it's unlike you and me, right? If I walk into this room, I've come in 100%. You have me. I'm in this room. But with God, if God comes into the room, he comes and he keeps on coming because he's infinite, right? The, the train of his robe fills the temple. It's like, you know, a king walking in and the end of his robe has no, uh, there is no end to the robe that comes after him because he's infinite. So it's a legitimate prayer to pray, God, I want more of you because you can never have all of God in completion, entirety. There's always more to God. So it's perfectly it's the Holy Spirit for us, God for us. But having said all that, I think the, uh, you know, uh, the other part of your question was, why are we not seeing things happen? It's because we, we haven't learned to yield to the Holy Spirit Monday to Saturday, right? We haven't learned to make ourselves available and put ourselves in places where the anointing will manifest. So those are things we will uh, we want to talk about. Uh, okay, so that is a very long answer to your question. I hope I answered your question, Maggie. 
Yes, I uh, did. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you very much. Let's take up the question from Charles. What's your question, Charles? All right, maybe Charles went to sleep while I was answering Maggie's question. Charles, there? <laughs> no. Okay. No. <laughs> I was just joking. No. Go ahead. What's the question? It was, it was something like a follow up. It was like a follow up, but now, when you were talking, you explained everything. I'm okay now. Okay. Can you hear me? Fine. And there are other. Yes, yes, yes. We hear you, Charles. So, yeah. If any, any other question, any other question comes up, feel free to ask. Christopher, your question, please. Uh, yes, Pastor. So, um, can we say that uh, the 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 Holy Spirit indwelling us is um, synonymous with the Spirit being that and that we have? Uh, you know, the Spirit being, uh, uh, you know, with, along with the, the the body and uh, and the and the soul. And um, if if that is if that is uh, uh what is um uh, uh i mean if that is what uh, what, what it is then i uh, just have a couple of uh, follow-up questions with regards to um why we we still need to nourish the the, the spirit uh when we have when we have such a spirit uh, a, a completely perfect uh, uh so uh, you know with the holy spirit being completely perfect why do we need to nourish it and um, in relation to that, the second question would be, um, uh, even though we have the Holy Spirit in us, we would need to have uh, our, rather grip the, our, our soul, um, our soul being, which is um, possibly the mind and, uh, uh, and the will to ensure that, you know, we, we take full advantage of, of, the, of, that, uh, of that spirit being which is the Holy Spirit. All right. So I think, yeah, so it goes back to the very first question. So our human spirit is different from the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit is God. Each one of us are spirit, soul, and body. So we have a human spirit, which is you, the real you, and different from the Holy Spirit, who is God. The Holy Spirit, so the human spirit can be, you know, the, we also use the New, the, 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 the New Testament also uses the word heart for the human spirit. So the human spirit is like a house. And God, the Holy Spirit, comes and dwells in this house. But the human spirit is also like, you know, the analogy would be the, the physical person. So the human spirit can grow. So it's not the Holy Spirit growing, but the human spirit needs to grow. The human spirit needs to be strengthened. The Holy Spirit comes and strengthens the human spirit. Right? So example, a scripture, Ephesians chapter, and I'll be going a little off track, but we'll get back. Ephesians 3, he says um, that, that your, Ephesians 3, 16, your, you are strengthened with power by his spirit. So which part of me is strengthened? My human spirit is strengthened. How? By his spirit. Holy Spirit strengthens me. Right. So the human spirit is different, not the same as the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we need to grow the human spirit. We need to protect the human spirit from sin. Uh, we need the human spirit needs to receive revelation knowledge because knowledge is part of our growing up and the human spirit needs to be trained and the holy spirit has come to dwell here and to teach and train and empower the human spirit is that okay so just a far follow-up question um if the the human spirit um can it be um or is it susceptible to to uh, to the evil one? 
even though as believers we are uh, you know we have we have um, uh, you know we've been uh, you know given given that you know that um, uh, new you know, life yeah that new life so i just wanted to know you know if it, is it susceptible to to the evil one so as a believer the enemy satan or his demons cannot touch the human spirit because the holy spirit is dwelling there so the human spirit is like a house the holy spirit is dwelling okay but what satan and his demons can do is they can touch our body they can affect our body or they can affect our soul to that extent they can reach in you know and a lot of the like so the, the soul the bat the mind is where the battle a lot of battle happens in the thoughts and imagination so on but they cannot touch the human spirit because human spirit for a believer you have you're born again covered by the blood of jesus the holy spirit is indwelling but in the case of an unregenerate person a person who's not born again here it is possible for evil spirits to come and reside evil spirits can reside in the body they can also reside in the soul they can also reside in the spirit of an unregenerate person that's what jesus described in matthew 12 right so um, that happens when a person is possible for a person who's not born again is that clear christopher uh, yes pastor i i i, I guess i uh, uh, as the house uh, that that is that is uh, that is uh, uh, the I mean the, sp the spirit being ha house, which is you know where the where the Holy Spirit is re is residing, um, we um, we have that we have that um, uh, you know we have that it's sort of you know that protection, and um, um, and because the Holy Spirit is residing, uh, isn't it? Um, isn't that isn't that isn't that house um, a very strong as as, as as spirit house? Why does it need that much of nourishing? I guess that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, so uh, the house is just one of the many analogies that the New Testament uses or the Bible uses uh, to talk about the human spirit. It's just one analogy. Uh, so like we said, uh, the spirit is also referred to as a person, like they talk about the inner man or the hidden man of the heart. So also like, you know, so the other analogy of the spirit is also like a human being, which needs to be nurtured, needs to be fed. That's why the Bible says, like newborn babies receive the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So in another analogy for the human spirit is baby, a human being. Right. So just like how we feed a baby, you feed your spirit. So while the Holy Spirit is there, I need to train my own human spirit. Um, and, I, and, and that process of nourishment is me receiving that strength which the Holy Spirit has come to give me so that I could be strong, I could grow. And the spirit can then resist the devil uh, by exercising its influence into the soul and through the body. Right. So why must the spirit be nurtured so that the spirit can receive the truth and the, whatever the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit has come to give and be strong enough to exert its influence over the soul and the body. So the Holy Spirit is not going to bypass my spirit and control my soul and my body. The Holy Spirit is going to empower my spirit to exert its influence over my soul and my body so that's why my spirit needs to be strengthened that's why i need to pray i need to feed upon the word so that's why we also have many believers where the holy spirit is dwelling in them but because they have not nurtured their own human spirit they are very weak their own human spirit has not received the strength from the holy spirit to control their soul and their body so they still end up, you know, doing things that is not becoming of a child of God. It's not that the Holy Spirit is not in them. They have not nurtured their own human spirit 
to learn to dominate the soul and the body. Okay, is that all right? Okay, all right. Uh, I haven't started the lesson if you're already into questions here. Or at least I was trying to start. Okay, we have two more questions. Okay, all right. So I will answer these two more questions and then we will get started. And then if there are any more questions, oh, there's one more question for Abraham, okay. I don't want to disappoint anybody, but okay, let's let's do this. Prabhakar's question is, does our spirit have the capacity for the infinite Holy Spirit? Can our spirit contain the infinite spirit? Can our spirit capacity be increased? All right, so Prabhakar, the answer is, our spirit capacity can be increased. The answer is yes. And the next semester, we're going to be doing a course on developing the human spirit. How do you develop the human spirit? You know, so the human spirit has faculties. There are at least seven faculties of the human spirit. And so we need to develop those seven faculties of the human spirit. So the answer to your question is yes. The, the, the faculties of the human spirit can be developed. Uh, the human spirit can be, the capacity of the human spirit can be developed. Um, we can grow, right? But, uh, 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 but uh, it doesn't mean I can, you know, the Holy Spirit is infinite, right? And so we are growing, right? And, and, and so no person can say, I have all of the Holy Spirit. No, right? We can just be more yielded to him, more surrendered to him. Okay, but we can grow in our spirit. That's what the Bible says, grow in grace. Second Peter 3.18, grow. Which part of you must grow? Not your soul, not your body, but your spirit. Grow in grace, that is the character, the virtues, and in the knowledge, that is revelation. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? So that growth has to happen. And there are many other scriptures that talk about spiritual growth, okay? All right, let's try to finish the others quickly. So how many spirits then can a human spirit accommodate in that case of Christopher? How many spirits can a human spirit? So you talk, okay, if a person is demon possessed, uh, in the spirit realm, there is no, what is this, space constraint, okay? So you find people who've demon possessed, you know, like we see in, 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 in the gospels, the legion, which is about 6,000 demons, all packed into one human spirit. Sometimes we read about people who had seven demons, seven spirits. So seven, 6,000, there's no limit there. Answer to your question, Kennedy. All right, let's see now, uh, Abraham, I want, to ask, is being filled with the Spirit different from the anointing? Okay, yes. Yes, uh, Abraham, that's kind of what I was trying to say. The Bible, so we are trying to distinguish between the indwelling, being filled with the Holy Spirit versus being anointed by the Spirit. And this key that we're going to talk about, key five, is about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So I was just trying to distinguish the two. Being filled with the Spirit means the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you and helping you live uh, the Christian life. The anointing that we're going to talk about is the empower the Holy Spirit for you to do the ministry. But in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, this is used synonymously, synonymously, okay? The word, the Spirit coming upon, being filled, is used interchangeably in the book of Acts. Because, you know, uh, if, you, if you want to see this, Acts 1.5, Jesus said, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8, he said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, you'll receive power. Acts 2.4, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So, Acts 1, verse 5, baptized. Acts 1, verse 8, upon. Acts 2, verse 4, filled. It's kind of used interchangeably, but the point is this, when you're filled, you're baptized, that you you have the spirit upon you as well. So, it is used interchangeably in the book of Acts, especially the early chapters. But later on, as you know, as you come through the epistles, then it kind of becomes a more it becomes more clear that 
being filled with the Holy Spirit talks more about how you live your daily life under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And being anointed talks about how your the Holy Spirit works through you for ministry. And this, this this latter part that we want to focus on. Okay. Does that answer your question, Abraham? Yes, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Okay, good. Rose, thank you for answering. Thank you, Rose. Charles, this so this doctrine is itchy. <laughs> we must scratch it thoroughly. That's interesting. Can we take more time so we can grow in the spirit? Uh, I'm not sure I understood your question. Uh, can we take more time so we can grow in this? Yeah. So, so it's not it's not a, it's not a question. Uh -huh. It's like you were like uh, we haven't begun. I am still answering questions. We haven't begun what I had packaged for you today, guys. But now I am still answering questions. It's like, yeah, I'm not asking, but I'm saying, let's take time so that we can grow because this is where things originate. If we understand this, then we are able to help others that are behind us. Thank you. Okay, okay. I got what you're saying. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Okay, fine, fine. Fine, fine. I got it. Okay, thank you. All right, so yes, please feel free to ask your questions. We will, all right. So what we are going to talk about is about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is one person, he's God. He lives in us to transform us, change us to become like, Jesus, but he also moves through us upon, so we use the word upon because that's how the, that's how the, the language is in, in Luke 4. He moves upon us, literally works through us to touch others. So this working through us to touch others is what we want to talk about. It's what we refer to as the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit is working through me, upon me and through me, through us, to touch other people. That's called the anointing. Okay, so he's always in you. He's always upon you. But what we were saying is, his dwelling in you has also, is not a passive thing. We have to actively submit to his Indwelling, that's what we call being filled with the Spirit. If I'm not filled with the Spirit, that means if I'm not actively submitting to His influence, then I won't be like Christ. I will not be walking in love and joy and peace and kindness and meekness and temperance and faith. It won't manifest. The, the fruit of the Spirit won't be there. Why? Not the Holy Spirit stopped dwelling in me. It says that I seized walking in the Spirit, that is walking under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Similarly, with the anointing. He's upon you and me all the time. But we need to learn how to recognize the anointing. That means Him moving on me in order to do a work whether it's a healing or whether it's a teaching or whether it's a prophecy or whether it's a deliverance or whatever, right? He wants to get a work done. So he anoints us to do that work. But I must learn when the Holy Spirit is anointing me, you know, stirring me up, moving me, saying, hey, I want to work through you. Can you go do this? So that's called the anointing. Right? Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted, to give sight to the blind, to bring liberty to the captives, to set those who are oppressed, set them free, to proclaim the year of the Lord, the acceptable year of the Lord. So the anointing is, is upon him to do those things. Same way, 
the anointing comes upon each of us as believers to do the work. And that's what we're talking about, the supernatural ministry, right? But we have to learn how to cooperate, first of all, how to recognize that the Holy Spirit is on me, stirring me to do something. So for example, think about this, okay? This may sound ridiculous, but the point we want to get across. Jesus is always anointed. Let's say he's sleeping. Is he anointed? Yes. That means the Holy Spirit is there, ready to work. But is he doing anything? No, he's sleeping. That means, so we refer to that as passive. That means the anointing is there, but he's not healing anybody, he's not preaching, he's sleeping. That means the anointing is not active. So we would say at that moment, uh, he, you know, it, he uh, say the anointing is not flowing, we would say, example. We're using language just to describe that particular state, right? Is he anointed? Yeah, he's anointed, but the anointing is not active, it's not flowing, it's not doing anything. So Jesus wakes up, he goes to brush his teeth. Is he anointed? Yes. Is the anointing flowing? No. Why? Because he's brushing his teeth. And nobody's being healed, nobody's being delivered. But now let's say Jesus, you know, has his breakfast, everything. He gets ready, he goes out. Uh, people gather. Now, while he was walking there, was he anointed? Yes. But was anything happening? No. But when he gets there, he starts speaking. And while he is speaking, suddenly revelation comes into the hearts of people. Oh, whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Oh, what's happening? Now, the anointing is flowing and the anointing is bringing wisdom into their hearts. The anointing is, you know, people may, may get, even Jesus ministers, people get healed or people get delivered, whatever. Now the anointing is flowing. Was he anointed when he was sleeping? Yeah. Was he anointed when he was brushing his teeth? Yeah. Was he anointed when he was having his breakfast? Yeah. But the anointing was not flowing. It was not do, nothing was happening. So when he was ministering, that time, the anointing was active, meaning the Holy, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit was being manifested. It was doing something, whether it is in the teaching that he was giving to the people that would give them wisdom or uh, bring revelation into their hearts or whether it was healing or delivering and so on. So that is what we are referring to as the anointing. It is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit being expressed through the human vessel to cause healings and miracles. Now that same Holy Spirit is on you. Okay? Now you get up, you're going out, and the Holy Spirit wants to flow through you. So he's going to move on you. But you and I, we need to recognize, oh, the Holy Spirit wants to do something. Right? There's a flow of the anointing. And so I need to cooperate with him to release it, whether it's, you know, maybe somebody gives me a call and I'm talking to them. And while I'm talking to them, the Holy Spirit wants to do something for them through the phone call. Or maybe I meet somebody and the Holy Spirit wants to do something through me to help that person at that mo moment, whatever. The anointing, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> sorry, wants to flow through you. It could be to an individual, it could be to a group, it could be in a church service, whatever, you know, there are different situations. That flow is what we're calling as the anointing, and that is what we want to learn how to yield to. We want to understand about the anointing, and we want to understand, you know, 
how could you know can we grow in this can we have more of the anointing uh, you know what causes more of the anointing to flow um, uh, what what affects the, the level of the anointing can there be different measures you know uh, i'll just answer this question because uh, the Beth had mentioned this earlier. So we see in the Bible, there are different measures of the anointing. How do we see this? Examples, uh, in the case of Moses, right? Uh, we, we will pick this up again next week. Uh, I'll just mention it here. Uh, so Moses was anointed as a prophet of God, uh, a deliverer for the people of Israel, etc. And he comes to a point when he says, this is in Numbers chapter 11. He says, God, I, I can't handle this alone. And God says, okay, I want you to choose 70 people. I will take off the spirit that's on you and I'll put it on them. So there was a transfer of anointing. That's another thing we're going to discuss. What's on Moses came on them. There was 70 people who were anointed. But they didn't have the same measure of the anointing that Moses had. He said, I will take off. That means there was a portion of that given to the 70. And we know it because these 70 didn't do what Moses did. But they had a measure of his anointing. And the measure is always given. The anointing is always given for a work. What was their work? To help in the... Uh, you can use the word administration or the leading or the governing or, you know, the spiritual leadership of the people. Each one was given a certain number of people to take care of. Think about Moses and Joshua. Uh, Exodus, the 30th chapter says, um, uh, Joshua had the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So there's an impartation, a transfer of anointing, but he had a portion of Moses. He had the spirit of wisdom. Moses was a prophet. Moses, you know, the, the anointing of Moses' life was very great, very different. Joshua had only a certain aspect of it, the spirit of wisdom, which was for leadership. So it's a different measure of anointing. We also know about Elijah and Elisha. In this case, Elisha walked in a double measure of the anointing that Elisha had. So a different measure. We know about Elijah and John the Baptist. Now there's a transfer of anointing across time and the bible says john the baptist came in the spirit and power of elijah so there's a transfer of anointing across time but there's a different expression of the anointing elijah did many miracles john the baptist didn't do any miracle but what was the what was the similarity both elijah and john the baptist caused a people to turn to the lord that was the, the anointing. So John the Baptist walked in that aspect of Elijah's anointing to cause the people to turn to the Lord. Right? So different measures of anointing. Okay. Uh, so which, uh, and then John 3.34. Yeah, John the Baptist is speaking. He says, uh, concerning Jesus, he says, uh, the Father... Uh, this John 3.34 the father does not give the spirit by measure to him so John speaking about Jesus says he uh, sorry this is not John yeah John, John, John speaking for he whom God has sent talking about Jesus speaks the words of God because God does not give the spirit by measure to him. So he's saying, look, Jesus, the one who comes, he will speak God's word and the spirit is upon him without measure, meaning just abundant, overflowing measure. So looking at all these scriptures, we can say, you know, the, the Bible talks about different measures. So what does it mean? It simply means that the expression of the Holy Spirit through the individual is to varying degrees. It doesn't mean there are portions of bits and pieces of the Holy Spirit. No, one person, but the expression, how he is manifesting, how he is expressing himself is varied, it's different. Uh, the degree to which he expresses and the facet, what aspect of him 
is being expressed is different. So that's why we talk about different kinds of anointing. What do we mean by different kinds of anointing? Is the same Holy Spirit, but what aspect of him is being re released? What aspect of him is being expressed is what determines the expression of the anointing. So we say there are different kinds of anointing, right? And one last thing I will say, and we will build this up next week is, usually the anointing that is expressed through a human vessel, that is through you, through me, is aligned to the call, the gifting, and the ministry God has given us. So for example, you would not expect me to manifest a worship anointing or the anointing of a psalmist. Why? Because that's not the call. That's not the ministry that God has given me. So the anointing of a psalmist, the anointing of a worshiper, worship leader, that kind of anointing, it, maybe it may happen in my personal time with God, but not going to happen in a ministry setting. I mean, very rarely, sometimes one rare occasion I might sing for two minutes. Okay, I say like, okay, I got it. some amount of worship anointing came. <laughs> but that's not the norm. Why? Because the expression of the anointing through your life is aligned to your call, gifting, and ministry. Okay, that's another thing to keep in mind. Okay? So I kind of touched on various, various things. We will kind of develop this next, next class, build this a little further. The goal is we want to learn, each one of us, we need to learn how to recognize and how to flow with the anointing because that's a key to manifesting the supernatural. The anointing comes upon us for a purpose, to express the supernatural through healing, through deliverance, through miracles, etc. Okay? All right. Um, for the New Testament believers, can a man of God impart a measure of anointing? Yeah. So Romans chapter 1, verse 11, uh, Paul writes, he says, you know, he says, right to the, Ro to the believers at Rome, he says, I, I desire to come to you that I might impart to you some spiritual gift. Uh, he uh, repeats that in Romans 15. He says, for when I come to you, I will come to you in the full measure of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Uh, he tells Timothy, he says, uh, Timothy, stir up the gift of God, which, is given, which was given to you through the laying on of hands. So we see even in the New Testament that there is this spiritual impartation, something that is given, but there is criteria for impartation. Impartation doesn't happen just because somebody touched you. Right. There is criteria. There's, we will talk about that as well. If, if, if you're interested, uh, we can cover that as well. Okay. Uh, Brother Mano, I hope I answered your question. Okay. All right. So let's pause here. I want you to just think about these things and we will kind of get into understanding more about the anointing and the learning how to flow, learning how to be yielded to the anointing so that something can happen. Uh, for benefiting other people. Okay. Is everybody okay? Class became very quiet. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, we will continue this next week. Okay. All right. Let's close in prayer and uh, we will pick this up. Go ahead. Somebody can pray and dismiss us. I pray. All right, Charles. All right. Father God, we thank you so much for this morning again that we are learning about you, specifically you, Jesus Christ, and going deeper to the Holy Spirit and how you endure in us, how you anoint us, how you stay with us. Lord, I pray that you will help us understand it deeper. I speak a revelation of you upon us that we will be able to understand this, so that we will be able also to help others that have not yet gotten the opportunity to study this. Thank you for today. Lord, we pray that even as we prepare to meet next week, we will be ready for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a good uh, rest of the afternoon. I'll see you again soon. God bless. And also enjoy your weekend. Bye now. God bless you all. Thank you.